Jose Ella Sanchez is an 83-year-old antique collector and school teacher living in Irvine, California. His career has taken him far and wide, from selling fruits as a child, to working on NASA's 1960s chimpanzee program, to traveling throughout the Americas collecting Native American and Old West artifacts. Everyone has a sort of life theme. Like, you know how movies, they have different themes like horror, like comedy, mm -hmm. or like action? Right. Right. And people have themes too. Sure, so, yeah. If you had like a thesis for your life, what would it be? I think it would be continue to learn because you don't know where that leads. I grew up watching uh, Western movies, Cowboys and Indians, and so I've always liked Cowboys and Indians. And so uh, when I, I was called by the Red Cross to, uh, to collect some money from my neighbors, the first house that I knocked at there was, a, there was this little old lady that asked me uh, to come in and talk. And I, I think that, you know, that she wanted to talk, and she asked me what I did, so I told her that I, that I was a, a teacher in Burbank. And uh, so I noticed that, that uh, there, were, there were a lot of Indian Navajo rugs, and on the floor there were also Navajo rugs, and she had some some Native American things scattered throughout the house. And she asked me uh, if, if they were valuable. And I did tell, them, tell her they were valuable. And I, and I gave her an estimate from what I knew because the rugs were all different, uh, but they were authentic. Mm -hmm. So she, she sold me all of her rugs and, um, and that's how I got started in uh, selling and buying uh, American Indian items. I had no idea that you could make a living as a collector selling and buying things. I had no idea. That didn't even enter my mind until somebody told me, wow, where did you get that? <laughs> That's it. My favorite part of collecting is teaching the person that's selling it what they have. Some of the things I found at garage sales, you would find just outstanding work that people said that people said I don't like this or somebody gave this to me and some people just don't know the value of of, of what they've had uh, but my mother always instilled in me uh, to be honest with people so I would tell them okay this is uh, this may be worth two hundred dollars and they didn't even know that it was worth, of course you're not gonna pay somebody $200 if that's what it's worth, mm -hmm. you know, but you give them something a little bit more than what, what they were asking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think that if you're honest with people and you try to be good, it all comes back to you. It all comes back to you. Mm -hmm. I taught for the Burbank Unified School District for, uh, from 1963 until uh, 2001. Long time. Yeah, and uh, I I loved it. I taught uh, I taught Spanish. I taught history. I taught English, and then I taught woodshop. And oh. and, and after a while, uh, some of the boys uh, asked me what I did for fun. I said, Well, I like to go hiking, camping, fishing. And then some of them asked me, Well, could you take us? All the boys were really really nice, and so I would take them and. Their favorite place to go was Death Valley. They used to love to go to Death Valley. And I only took boys who didn't have fathers. I would only take boys who did not have fathers. Was there a specific reason for that? Well, because um, boys, you know, you know boys, they like to go fishing and hunting and things like that. And their mothers, of course, they really don't like to go camping. And so that's why I only had that club just for boys. Later, uh, when I retired in two, uh, 2001, I was surprised that I was given two congressional uh, citations. And I said, well, what? It wasn't my teaching. I mean, you know, uh, I must have done something. And so I think it was because of the work that I had done with, with the boys who had no fathers. I was just doing something that I thought was nice. And I, would, I was doing something that I that I know that if, if I wasn't here and I had a, a son, for example, that I would like somebody to take, you know, to take him camping or hiking. So mm. it all comes back to you.
If you're nice, it'll come back to you. Treat people right, it'll come back to you. That sounds like a really good standard to live by. Yeah, yeah well, I had a good mother and father. <laughs> yeah. They taught me that. Yeah. I've had a, 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 a fantastic life, you know, if you treat people right, then everything's going to turn out good for you. Yeah. So the golden rule, kind of. Right. <laughs> no, I've been extremely lucky. I've been extremely lucky. Mm, how so? Well, when I was in high school, uh, I graduated in 1958. I didn't want to stay in San Antonio, but thank goodness that the pastor at my church, I belong to a Baptist church, and he put in uh, a nice word for me at Baylor University. So I had a little scholarship to go to Baylor University with a lot of help from people then. I graduated from, from Baylor. If there's one sentence that you want to tell, um, I guess just younger generations in general, mm -hmm. um, what would it be? I think it would be, don't be afraid to try something that you think you can't do. I don't know how it started, but it started, I think, when I uh, was in about the seventh or eighth grade. And like I said, I don't know how it started, but I started stuttering. Then my mother said, well, how can you be a teacher if you stutter? So at Baylor, then I looked into stuttering and I found out that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all in your mind. And so I read books on, on stuttering and I, and I got over it. So then I said, okay, now I'm gonna be a teacher. So when I told my mother, after I had conquered it, and I told my mother, I'm going to be a teacher. She said, well, how can you be a teacher when you stutter? And I said, well, I'm not stuttering anymore. <laughs> and so that was one of the things that I really, really felt fantastic about, you know, that you can overcome a lot of things. It's all up here. It's all up yeah. here. In life, there are times when you have to do something or else you're going to go in one direction. And all of us are capable of doing a little bit more, whether it be helping somebody in the kitchen or helping somebody study. All of us are capable of doing a little bit more. I never thought that I would be able to graduate from university, but I got a lot of help from my sister. And she said, she said, Joe, you can do it. All you have to do is study more. And I think all of us are capable of studying more doing more than we think we can.